We've just had the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. It was really exciting because it was leaked beforehand. For the first time ever in the newspapers before this great meeting where they reveal the names of the winners, the names were already known. I think, though I'm not sure, that somebody sent out a press release too early. This year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry. You want to know what it was for. And it was for so-called quantum dots, which are very, very small particles which have strange properties. You may actually be watching me thanks to quantum dots because they're often used for the coloured pixels on the television screen, the red, the green and the blue. As usual, there were three prize winners, Louis Bruce, who is at Columbia University in the United States, and Alexei Ivanovich Yakimov, a Russian who appears to be working now in the United States. And those two discovered that you could actually make quantum dots. And the third winner, Munji Bawendi, was the person who found out how you could make quantum dots easily and on a large scale. Is this a chemistry Nobel Prize or physics? Well, the people who got the Nobel Prize are definitely chemists, and a big part of it was the synthesis of, of nanoparticles, quantum dots. So, yes, I guess it should be a, a Nobel Prize in chemistry. Could it have been a Nobel Prize in physics? Absolutely. Oh, there are a lot of physicists who work in nanoparticles and quantum dots, absolutely, including many physicists in this building. Lawrence Eves, who you've spoken to many times before, Amalia Patani, many people in this, in this department work on quantum dots of various breeds and various types. So, yeah, it's well deserved. To the people who got it, it's absolutely well deserved. Are quantum dots just like nanoparticles? Are they just small molecules? or They're, They are small particles of crystalline materials. And the point is that if they're very small, then quantum effects change their properties. Light propagates in different ways through the particles. So you can have two particles of the same material but of different sizes, one of which say fluoresces in the blue and the other in the red. Chemically they're identical, just one piece is bigger than the other piece. Another word for quantum dots is an artificial atom because essentially, although it may comprise hundreds if not thousands of atoms, it acts like one big atom. You're telling me a quantum dot is bigger than a molecule? Yeah. It's, it's a very, very big molecule comprising hundreds and sometimes thousands of atoms. But the quantum aspect comes from it, it's still pretty small. It's really, really small. You know, this is a, a, whatever number of atoms we've got in there compared to a bulk solid, which would have 10 to the 23 atoms. It's tiny compared to the, the solid. But the, the really neat thing about it is simply by changing the size, you change the, how the electrons behave. And so here's a good example. These are gold nanoparticles. We've talked about these on 60 symbols many, many years ago when I had more hair. This is gold, but you say, but it's red. It doesn't look gold. And the reason it looks red is because those are teeny particles of gold, a few nanometers across. And when you make them that size, light interacts with gold, the electrons of gold, in a very different way. So it doesn't, it loses that gold sheen. It's not like you'd imagine that's what the color of gold would be if it were in solution. It's the fact that it's small and you've changed the frequencies at which the electrons are moving and therefore you've changed how they interact with light. Hang on, are you drinking the gold particles? <laughs> yeah, we make litres of this stuff. I, 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 yeah. I drink it all the time. I hope you're not actually In drinking In fact, on the west coast of the US, I believe there were many people who did decide that it was really good for health reasons to drink solutions of gold nanoparticles. I um, can't commit one way or the other. The breakthrough by Moon Jim Bowendi was to discover a way of making these. It's really quite simple. The way he did it was to take a very hot liquid and inject into it a solution which started forming crystals. And because they were all injected at the same moment, all the crystals started forming at once. But because the liquid going in was cold, 
the solution cooled down so they didn't grow very much. And then you could warm them up and get them all to grow just a little bit more. And he chose a liquid which coated the surface of each particle so they didn't clamp together. There's a great picture of the website. And these, I believe, are cadmium selenide or cadmium sulfide nanoparticles. The differences in colour you see are just due to differences in size. Because by changing the size of the particles, they change how the electrons are confined and that changes the energy levels of the electrons and that changes how they interact with light. The clever thing is being able to make nanoparticles, first of all, in a very, very well controlled way so you can control the, the size of them. Down to, in some cases, down to a few atoms difference. It's really very, very neat, very, very elegant chemistry. You can make nano rods. You can make branch things, which they call tetrapods. You can bring those together. You can assemble them in different ways. And each time you're doing that, you're controlling what the electrons are doing. And therefore, you're getting a huge amount of functionality out of these. So the thing these people have done, basically, is they've just got really good at making the stuff, synthesizing it. And, and understanding it. I would say it's the Nobel Prize isn't just for the synthesis, so that's very important. It's also for the fundamental understanding. Right in the early days, in the late 70s, early 80s, when they were trying to figure this out, they made some really, really good judgments as to the underlying physics and then being able to control the chemistry and the physics in concert. You know, it's really elegant work and thoroughly deserves the Nobel Prize. Were these like famous people who everyone thought was going to win a Nobel Prize? Had you heard of them or is this always a surprise to you as oh. well? Well, the only person I had heard of was Louis Bruce, who worked in a similar field to me low temperature experiments at minus 253 centigrade in the late 1960s, early 1970s. And I think that I actually met him in his um, lab at the Bell Labs in New Jersey on my first visit to America 50 years ago. But we had completely lost touch. And so I was quite excited when I saw his name on the Nobel Prize. I didn't even know what he'd been doing, whether he was still doing science and so on. Phil, I know from working with you over the years that your science involves pretty small particles, individual atoms yeah, sometimes, yeah, but yeah. you know, this, this kind of level. Is a lot of the work you do underpinned by what these people did? Absolutely. Um, is it related to? Absolutely. Is it much of the same physics many times? It is. Um, so we've got a new person started, hopefully who you'll meet in a future 60 symbols or whatever, a guy called Brian Corrali, who literally builds up artificial atoms but on a surface. So essentially quantum dots by moving individual atoms with a scanning probe microscope on a surface and confines electrons with a m huge amount of control. Just by tweaking the position of the tip, sliding these atoms around, you can form uh, different structures and therefore essentially do chemistry with artificial atoms, bring them together, control the spacing of those atoms. Um, so there are huge links between what we do, what many other nanoscience groups do, and this Nobel Prize. In fact, as they say in the press release associated with this, this, this laid many of the foundations for nanoscience. After the announcement, the press of the winner, winners appear on the via um, satellite link and they're asked questions and so of course the first question was did you hear about the leak but because they were all in America and they were asleep when the leak happened they hadn't heard it so they were woken up by the traditional telephone call saying that um, you've won it has struck me that quite often, though not this year, the prize winners say, we got a phone call, we thought it was a hoax. But I've never seen any statistics about how many hoax phone calls there are to people pretending they won the Nobel Prize. Have you ever got one? I haven't got one, but I'd know it was a hoax. <laughs> See the link in the video description for more of our previous videos about Nobel Prizes in Chemistry. And while you're there, you can also find a link to what's going on in chemistry at the University of Nottingham, where we make most of these videos. <laughs>